Bud Light is America's favorite beer hands down. Even in the golden age of craft beer that we live in today, and more than 6,400 competitive breweries out there, Bud Light still commands 15.4% of the market share for a single brand of beer alone in 2017 in the United States. For a product that is so commonplace in American society and the official beer sponsor of the NFL, it's really kind of surprising how little we know about the product itself. Sure, I could tell you how it tastes or comment on their brilliant viral marketing campaigns. Dilly dilly. 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 Here's to the friends you can always count on. But beyond it being beer, I couldn't really tell you what's in it. Probably some malt and hops, but compared to the other iconic beverage brands like Coca Cola or Gatorade, Bud Light is missing an ingredients list. Why does Bud Light and beer in general get to ignore many of the nutritional information requirements and ingredients lists that other beverages have to contend with? And is there any controversy around this fact? Spoiler alert, yes. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and beer labels are something that seem to provide endless fascination for me as a beer nerd. Over the past couple years I've been making beer videos, I already have several on beer labels. Whether it's cool label art, controversial beer names, or great branding that hacks your brain, beer labels are an important industry feature that always generates some great conversation. But one thing I haven't talked about yet on this channel are all the bits of information that are required by law to be on that label, and even those that aren't required. So join me on a short quest to see if we can find what goes into the making of Bud Light and discover what controversies surround your beer before you even open it. Let's get started. So the event that provided the inspiration for this video happened back in 2014 when a blogger at foodbabe.com led a large internet campaign pressuring the large mega brewing corporations to release information on the ingredients that go into their products. Some people viewed this event as a victory for grassroots advocates who managed to rally concerned citizens to get a concession from a large mega beverage conglomerate that could be billed as a victory for transparency and consumer protection everywhere. But looking back though, Food Babe's blog posts seem to be more conspiratorial rants using bud words like GMOs and hidden additives to scare consumers away from beer, and the big companies probably decided to nip the unfounded accusations of the bud by clarifying what actually goes into their beers. When the biggest media appearance rallying people to your cause is on Infowars, you know there's at least a little bit of conspiracy thinking involved. Now, regardless of what you think of the blog itself, it did manage to elicit a response from an industry that traditionally played things pretty tight to the vest when it came to ingredients. But the response they got wasn't exactly the most detailed descriptions of the relatively cryptic drinks. AB InBev created a website they pointed consumers to in a press release, tapintoyourbeer.com. The paragraph under this header reads as follows, and I promise I didn't make any of this up. There's a link to it below. <clears throat> this website will help you discover the immensely complex and sophisticated composition of your favorite drink. There are thousands of taste components contributing to undertones and aftertaste, different scents, and mouthfeel. Quality is more important than quantity, so please enjoy your favorite beers in a responsible way. Aside from this sounding like they pulled these words straight out of their most conservative lawyer's corporate drivel wet dream, it sounds like this might actually be a cool concept. Imagine an industry giant like Google or Nestle giving their average consumer unparalleled insights into their business and the science behind our modern global products and supply chains. But of course, you scroll down the page and you quickly learn that this is some grade A marketing bullshit. Let's see what information they give us for Bud Light. Huh. So we get some basic nutritional information, less than what's on a bottle of water here in the US. Uh, but we do get an ingredients list with four entries. Four! 
Remember literally right above this shit where they promised that they say that there are thousands of taste components? Thousands? And all they give us are four ingredients? This shit is absolutely ridiculous. They promise insights into all the things that make beer great, undertones, aromas, aftertaste, and then they just give me four fucking ingredients? What okay, so I went on a bit of a rant here, but in general, I don't like drink shaming people. If you're someone who enjoys Bud Light or other InBev products, I don't really have a problem with your choice and what to drink. More power to you. So please don't take this criticism of Bud Light's marketing as a criticism of your choice to drink it. But this website is absolute marketing drivel designed to mislead consumers into thinking AV InBev is in any way being transparent. Now let me prove it to you. Look at this ingredient list. If you've seen any of my videos on the brewing process, you know there is a very important ingredient missing from this list. Yeast. You can't even brew without yeast. So how does it become alcohol if you don't even list the yeast? And I know you use yeast, Bud Light, because you're actually brewed and not synthesized in a lab somewhere. 8B InBev came out later and clarified that they didn't include yeast because it was filtered out as part of the production, and therefore is not a final ingredient. And I guess that's a good enough excuse, but still, if you're leaving out yeast, imagine what else is getting left off of this ingredients list. And look, up top it says, become a beer master. I want to be a beer master, commanding beers to adhere to my tastes and create an awesome drunk that leads to no hangovers. Let's give that a click. Oh, it's a hard to read timeline and a few style descriptions. Yay. Okay, I'm tired of looking at this website. All this bad marketing crap has really begged one last question in my head though. Why are beer companies given exemption from the usual nutritional information requirements that other beverages have to adhere to? In this era of conspiratorial thinking and general mistrust of our political system, especially the federal government, it would be easy to think that AB InBev and Constellation Brands and all the other big brewers are doing some fancy backroom bribes to get away with hiding all sorts of dangerous additives, carcinogens, and mind control chemicals in their products. The reality, though, is pretty simple. The government has a separate agency to oversee alcohol labeling, which has different requirements than the standard FDA food and beverage labeling. Beer labeling requirements in the United States are overseen by the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, and this agency's history can be traced back to the end of Prohibition and the years shortly thereafter. In 1935, Congress passed the Alcohol Administration Act, which established a department that eventually would become the TTB, and had the responsibility of regulating labels on alcoholic beverages. As such, in 1990, when the FDA began requiring nutritional labeling on all the foods and beverages they oversee, beer was not caught up in this wave. And while you might think this is crony capitalism at work, having a separate body regulating alcohol and tobacco products is fairly common around the world. Most Western governments acknowledge that beer and other alcoholic beverages require some special treatment legally to avoid young people from getting their hands on it or warning consumers of the health risks associated with drinking. So what does the TTB require on beer labels? Well, I grabbed a random beer from my fridge to see if they have all the appropriate parts. Okay, let's pop open the beer fridge and see if we can find all the component parts of a beer label. Let's just go with this uh, blue moon here. So first thing we're looking for is the brand name, obviously right on the front here, no problem. Uh, then we're looking for a container size. So we're looking for something that says how big it is. Mm. Let's see here. Yep, right here. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Right here on the nutritional label, it says serving size is 12 ounces. So there we go. Uh, as for the type of beverage it is, I think that's right in the front. A Belgian style wheat ale, so no problem there. Um, the name and city of the brewer. Let's see here. Uh, hmm. See if we can find this on here. Yep, there we go. So it is brewed by. Oops, let me get this on camera. Yep, 
so brew by the Blue Moon Brewing Company out of Gold, Colorado, right there. And then we need to find the alcohol content, which is also by that uh, by that warning there. I think it says 3.9% right down there. Hard to see, but there it is. And then last but not least, the uh, government mandated Surgeon General's warning. So, looks like Blue Moon passed the test. Has all the component parts required of the beer label. In addition, the government requires certain additives that people are often more allergic to to be acknowledged on the label. This list is actually pretty short, including just yellow dye number 5, saccharine, sulfites, and aspartame. Of course, these basic requirements aren't without controversy. Ever since 1990, there have been advocacy groups pushing for FDA-style nutritional labels on beer and other mass-produced alcoholic beverages. The last major push for full nutritional labels was way back in 2003, but they were largely unsuccessful at getting a lot of public support for the changes. And this was actually a little surprising to me. Consumers in general have demanded more and more nutritional information about their food over the last 20 to 30 years, but beer and other alcoholic beverages seem to be the exception. My personal theory as to why is that many parts of the industry have become a lot more quality focused and transparent over the last two decades. More and more craft brewers were emerging onto the scene, and they weren't afraid to show how their products were being made or showing the quality of the ingredients they use. They invited people into their tap rooms and their brewing spaces, and they made the industry feel more open than it ever had before. Some craft brewers like BrewDog have even released their entire recipes in homebrew versions for all their beers. You can't really get much more forward than that. I think the quality conscious consumers, who would normally demand food companies and restaurants to provide nutritional information, are the same consumers who switched to quality obsessed craft beer. So most likely, the people who would push for the change are already getting what they're seeking from craft brewers, an open and honest conversation about the product. Regardless about how you feel of the current beer labeling requirements, the industry is definitely becoming more open as it becomes more local. I for one would encourage you to ask more questions of your bartender or local brewer about how they make their product and what their views on quality and ingredients are. There are more beer options than ever out there, so I think it's important we stop trying to spread weird conspiracies about labeling and other things, and just talk about making great beer. What do you think about beer labels? Is there a bit of information you'd really like to see included on a standard label? Let me know down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, be sure to check out the links in the description to the Beer by the Numbers Facebook page. We're discussing all sorts of great beer news over there. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll be back next week with more well-labeled beer content.